Hello, and welcome to Echoing God's Word, a monthly radio broadcast sponsored by the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. I'm Christian Rocha, your host for today's program. Thanks for taking the time to join us. Today, we are talking about adult faith formation. We have two of my colleagues in the studio today that will tell us about adult faith formation. We have Pat Reddington, the Vicariate One Catechetical Ministry Coordinator and also the Coordinator for Adult Faith Formation. So thank you for coming, Pat. Uh, thanks very much, Christian. I'm very happy to be here with you. Likewise. And we also have <laughs> Marta Stepniak, the Coordinator of Polish Catechesis. Hi, Christian, and uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Marta. And also, Marta will be, of course, uh, speaking in Polish for those listeners who speak Polish as well. Thank you both for being on the program. Um, so let's let's get to it, to adult faith formation. So it seems to me that adult faith formation is a type of lifelong learning, hence the name adult faith formation. Pat, can you start our discussion by explaining the importance of lifelong learning? Yeah, thanks for your question, Christian. Uh, lifelong learning, the concept... I think has been with us in the 20th century and the 21st century. It's, it's a key concept of all our uh, uh, experience today. Educational research and our personal experience, experience tells us that to live is actually to learn. Um, I was reading an article over the weekend in my local uh, community newspaper about a group called SeniorNet, and the, the article featured an 82-year-old woman learning to use social media, and she was learning to use Facebook simply because she wanted to communicate with her uh, grandchildren. Um, I'm a senior myself, and um, I was fascinated by that story. Um, my mother used to uh, tell us that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, that may apply to dogs, but I don't think it applies to older adults today. Uh, in fact, in our parish intentional adult faith formation programs, seniors and adults are uh, really the prime audi audience, the prime participants in those uh, parish uh, programs. Uh, catechetically speaking, um, we're called as Catholics to to conversion to formation, and adult faith formation offers all adults uh, in the Catholic Church today an opportunity to grow, uh, to nourish, uh, to be faithful Catholic Catholics by uh, reflecting on their experience and connecting that to the uh, great traditions of our Catholic faith. Thank you, Pat. And speaking of uh, catechesis in the church, how has the church, and in particular the U.S. Catholic bishops, sought to support and um, boost adult faith formation? I think uh, historically the emphasis on learning and education has been a key element of our Catholic faith. It goes back throughout our 2,000-year history. But I think particularly in the past uh, 50 years, um, adult faith formation, or adult catechesis as it is called, has received emphasis uh, uh, by our bishops uh, from the Vatican and the United States Catholic bishops, too. About 12 years ago, our American bishops published a document called Our Hearts Were Burning Within Us. It's a pastoral statement on adult faith formation. And that has been um, a very important in the development of adult catechesis in the past 12 years. And in that document, uh, the bishops argue, as previous uh, bishops and church documents have presented, that uh, adult faith formation, adult catechesis, is actually the axis, the central point of, around which all uh, catechesis revolves. Wonderful. And I think um, the phrase even was uh, ch the chief form of catechesis, correct? Yes. Uh, and how do you think the church is, is doing on making uh, adult faith formation uh, the primary form, the chief form of catechesis? Yeah, I, I think we're making uh, good progress. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the uh, Archdiocese of Chicago, we have over 9,000 catechists that are involved in complete catechesis, and by that I mean from preschool through uh, adult faith formation. We probably have a couple thousand that are involved in working with adults in parish intentional programs. It might be things, programs, processes like the RCIA or scripture sharing, scripture study, or other uh, topics of study. Uh, parishes, I think, are very uh, committed in the archdiocese to adult faith formation. Uh, pastors often appoint uh, staff people are lay volunteer leaders in the parish to coordinate adult faith formation. 
um, thousands of Catholics um, in the Archdiocese may not intentionally participate in formal programs, but uh, through their formation, they participate uh, in great ways, I think, in their families, in their neighborhoods, their communities, and give witness to Christian values. Speaking, too, going back to uh, your <laughs> the phrase, uh, can't teach a new, what is it, an old dog, new tricks, yes. right? Uh, it, like you said, it, sometimes it's not intentional that they might be getting formed and so forth. Do you feel like there's like a reluctance uh, on the part of adults to to join um, systematic formation? Uh, I think there's a great desire for a lot of adults to participate in formation. I was at a meeting with Cardinal George with the uh, Chicago Catholic Scripture School about a year and a half ago, and uh, someone in the audience asked him, why don't more adults participate in our parish adult education, our adult catechetical programs. And I think he hit one of the nails on the head. He said simply, uh, today's contemporary adults and parents have to deal with a time factor in their life. People have responsibilities at home with their families, uh, sometimes with elderly uh, parents with their children. They have jobs, occupations, professions, uh, commuting, a lot of people spend time commuting, so there's, there's definitely a time factor involved there. Um, uh, so he, I think he understands that, we understand that. So I think we have to find ways for independent learning, for adults in our parishes to learn on their own independently. Uh, some adults, I think, uh, believe that their formation stopped at the time they were confirmed, say in eighth grade or, or in high school or when they graduated uh, from college. But conversion uh, is our formation as, as Catholics uh, is, a, is a lifelong process. It, it never ends. Why do you think, too, that uh, the bishops have emphasized adult faith formation? What is it that makes it so important, especially in today's world? In a um, number of recent catechetical uh, documents and also in uh, the bishop's pastoral statement, Our Hearts Were Burning, uh, the bishops are very much aware of uh, the challenges of culture. Um, and we can look at American culture today. Um, experiences such as secularism, um, extreme individualism, consumerism, um, uh, a distance from religion and indifference to religion, um, kind of a distaste for the dig human dignity and community building activities by uh, are, are some negative aspects I think of our American culture. Those have an impact on all of us from from uh, young people through adults and cultural uh, influences are, are very strong. So that certainly would be one reason uh, why uh, the bishops see the very much the, the great importance of formation of adults. Another would be uh, that parents um, are the principal and primary educators of, of children and young people. Parents are the ones uh, who pass on the faith. Uh, the church refers to the family as the domestic church. So if, if faith has been given to us as gifts by our parents, our grandparents, by our uh, religious uh, teachers, by priests, by lay people, uh, so it's essential to have people well-versed uh, educated and formed in their faith to pass on the faith. So those are a couple reasons. Well, thank you, Pat, for that assessment. It was very enlightening, certainly for myself. And we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we'll talk about adult faith formation in parishes. Welcome back. You're listening to Echoing God's Word, a production of the um, Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry. And you can Find more information about our office, about uh, the topics we're talking about now, and the events we'll be talking about shortly uh, on our website, which is www.catechesis-chicago.org. And we also have a youth ministry website, www.youthministry-chicago.org. And you can find uh, you can find our uh, previous uh, broadcasts and even this one after after it's been aired live you can find those on youtube now as a type of slideshow video uh, in any case we are talking today uh, with pat reddington and marta stepniak about adult faith formation we've been talking about the importance and some of the general aspects i want to get into some of the particulars now especially in the parishes so marta I, uh, i'm told you have a lot of experience in adult faith formation why don't you tell us about your experiences um and you know feel free to speak to the polish audience as well 
Uh, yeah, I have experience with adult formation. I actually being the parishioner for St. John's Evangelist in Streamwood for almost six years right now. And uh, two years ago, I was attending the adult formation um, certification through our office, which was uh, really awesome and kind of give me the ideas of the structure and develop the group. And uh, the uh, whole uh, program was uh, for almost two months. And uh, after that, when I was certified, I started kind of doing the research, which was helping me because I was uh, working at that time in a research and development group and myself then I researched the parish uh, the parish needs uh, according to the adult formation group of course in Polish because uh, with my uh, ethnic background and uh, this is kind of based on the documents of the American bishops uh, church which was really helping me a lot and bringing the experience of being Polish and worship uh, mostly in Polish the mix of everything uh, I structure my group uh, in Polish language, but uh, the group was uh, kind of uh, target on the young adults, and uh, we, we don't have the ending age. Then uh, we, we name Creed because it was the simple uh, Catholic faith believing, then uh, uh, and um, simple to hear at that point and everybody can relate it to the name of the group and the structure of the group was uh, just two hours uh, of meeting every month the kind of discussion formation uh, first part of the formation prayers and uh, uh, I have the speaker for 45 minutes on each topic each month different topic and the discussion for another um, one hour then I think that the whole experience of being as a part of the Catholic Church here in the United States with this diversity you, uh, kind of uh, lead me an experience of being the teacher for both programs, Polish and English, at that point, and being the PPC member, being the AWC member <laughs> at that point on Archdiocese level, it's kind of uh, bring everything to the plate, then I can help people to because they mostly uh, need the formation group uh, with the question and try to find out the answer, what they really need right now. Then. Wonderful. And in your experiences, especially in the parish, what do you think makes a, a successful adult faith formation program? What are some of those elements? Actually, first of all, you have to listen what people are talking about, what they really need. You know, in our uh, background, in Polish background, uh, if you form the formation, you need the priest. You know, the lay can be the person who actually structured the group, that developed the group, they do everything according to the resources, but the person who is the speaker, the main idea has to be actually priest. Otherwise, this group is not going to be really committed and it's not going to be existing at that point. And mostly base, you have, you know, this is what's really helping me to have the contact with our office and get really uh, perspective of the very professional training. That's really helping because you're meeting the people with different experience, different background. They already search for different type of st structure of the group and everything you have on the table at that time, then you can use, use and help each other. Then it's really helpful. Marta, how many um, participants do you have in, in your parish program? I start last year. We have the first session for uh, nine meetings, and I was circulating from 35 up to 50 for each meeting. Yes, that, then that, that, that's very good. And I think uh, we can't count numbers in parish adult faith uh, formation programs. We always ask people. So it can be anybody from a few people up, up to large yeah, numbers. Yeah, up to large numbers. This is depends on the topic, first of all, and each each meeting I always have the, I ask them to give me a comment and based on the, uh, uh, of the comments I'm actually creating this session which is going to start today. We'll have the first meeting for another seven 
sessions then? Yeah, I think a, a key concept in adult faith formation is, is to listen to what the learners yeah. have to say, what they want to, le to learn. So that's why I think your program has, has been uh, successful. Uh, along with pastors, I think um, often pastors appoint leaders like yourself. Um, they're called coordinators of adult faith formation. You may also have a catechist in the parish that, that, that work with yeah, adults, a, a team. Um, and, of course, the, the, the parishioners that, that respond to the program. So there are various uh, constituencies that uh, go into uh, forming a successful program. I think planning is the, the essential uh, word, as in anything that, that works well. You have to do some planning and visioning of what, what can be. Yeah, you have to do some planning. I was doing the planning for almost seven months with my with my priest. Then, of course, you know, after each session, you kind of evaluate. It's not it's dynamic. Yes, the group has to have dynamic. Otherwise, it's just like be going to be boring and. You know, really. because adults carry with them their own uh, life experiences that, and wisdom that they can share with the larger group. Yeah, so. especially it's really, you know, it's really hard because you have the uh, group age from 25 up to 70, and everybody has experience uh, different from different, uh, you know, ethnic uh, experience, different life experience. Of course, the emotion is different, too, on each uh, session then. Yeah, one of the uh, my great experiences in my professional employment at, with the Office uh, for Catechesis and Youth Ministry has been working with people from uh, different ethnic and, and racial backgrounds, so African Americans, uh, Hispanic uh, folks, and, and the Polish uh, community. I've learned very much. Uh, from them, and I hope they've learned a few things from me, too. Of course, that, that's why I'm bringing, you know, people from different praying groups and different organizations on the parishes level and uh, archdiocese level kind of introduced to the people because you have, this is what you have to do. You can't be boxes. You are actually one church with diversity, which is, makes us unique and beautiful at that point. Well, thank you, Marta and Pat, for that discussion. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about uh, some events and some programs that can help our listeners make successful adult faith formation programs in their parishes as well. Welcome back to Echoing God's Word. Again, you can find all the information about the topic we're talking about today, adult faith formation, and the events we'll be talking about in this segment on www.catechesis-chicago.org. So, uh, Marta, I know you wanted to emphasize uh, the importance of having professional uh, professional formation to make a, an adult faith formation program very successful. Uh, why don't we talk about some of the uh, programs or events or resources that our office, uh, the Office for Catechesis and Youth Ministry, offers for uh, coordinators of adult faith formation or other, or other parishioners who want to make a successful adult faith formation program? One upcoming um, program, Christian, is a ministerial course that our, offer, our office offers. It's uh, entitled Adult Faith Leadership Formation. It's going to be offered in November on um, Fridays, November 4th, 11th, and 18th at St. Giles Parish in Oak Park, Illinois. And this is the uh, basic course um, that Marta participated in two, year, two years ago to give her some um, background and perspective. Uh, it's a 15-hour course. We look at some of the issues we've talked about today in, in greater detail. There are readings, uh, reflection. The course is conducted in a seminar uh, fashion. We respect uh, everyone's uh, experience. We bring together people who are um, uh, working in adult faith formation and also people who are new to the field. So it's, it's a good mix of people. So uh, we look at things like the vision and rationale for adult faith formation. We uh, discuss adulthood and uh, faith development. Uh, this year we've added a new module on uh, the development of our own spiritual life as adult faith leaders. Uh, we look at leadership models in society and also uh, within the adult faith um, formation uh, process within the parish, why adults learn, what they need to learn. Uh, we look at the issue of enculturation, how the gospel is preached in a uh, secular society, American society, and uh, review parish programs in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Uh, part of this program this year, we're bringing in a, a national speaker, 
uh, on November 18th, and this program is open to um, additional participants. Uh, Neil Parent is a former parish adult faith formation leader. Um, he's currently uh, the director of the Emerging Models of Pastoral Leadership Project, which tries to improve, improve the uh, quality of parish life. And he also served as the uh, director of the uh, National Conference of Catechetical Leadership and has worked with the American bishops in adult education. So he's going to be speaking on the new face of adult faith formation. So he'll be looking at adulthood today, how it's changing, the challenges it presents to the church, and how we can uh, present the theory and, and practice of adult faith formation uh, so that it's meaningful to uh, uh, Catholics today. And actually, I encourage everybody, when you're thinking to open, uh, actually develop the formation group, just attend uh, something uh, what is really um, made for you in in uh, in sense of the educational side and professional side because then what makes your formation group more successful i bardzo bym chciała zaprosić wszystkich moich rodaków na spotkania i korzystanie z naszej strony internetowej młodzieżpolska.org, na której znajdziecie wszystkie informacje dotyczące wszystkich programów naszego ofisu katechetycznego przy archidiecezji Chicago i oczywiście dla katechetów mamy nową stronę, jesteśmy na Facebooku, także oprócz tego mamy link do audycji radiowych, możecie Państwo je słuchać bez problemu przez naszą stronę internetową. Także serdecznie zapraszam, a w tej chwili pracujemy i od przyszłego roku mam nadzieję, że w języku polskim powstanie grupa, która będzie pomagała dla ludzi, którzy chcą otworzyć grupy po polsku w swoich parafiach. Także taki trening będzie dostępny od przyszłego roku dla naszej polskiej wspólnoty. Wonderful, I understood a few of those words. <laughs> yes. Um, any last uh, advice that you have for parishioners and uh, other leaders in the in the parishes to make an, a successful adult faith formation? Well, I, I think it's essential that we have adult faith formation. It is the axis around which all catechesis uh, revolves. Um, if you're interested in the topic, you can, as uh, Marta mentioned, you can contact our officer. More importantly, talk to your pastor, talk to the leadership in your parish, the education commission. Uh, it's a, adult faith formation, adult catechesis can contribute to a lively and, and vital parish. It's, it's a necessary ingredient for our formation, our conversion as uh, Christians and Catholics today. And have simply the passion and make your passion alive. And it's going alive in your group. Well, sounds like excellent advice, and hopefully all our listeners have been inspired uh, by this discussion and look into adult faith formation some more in their own education as well. I'd like to thank my colleagues Pat and Marta for joining us on this broadcast. This has been Echoing God's Word, a production of the Archdiocese of Chicago here on Relevant Radio, 950 AM.